The only way you get them gloves is if you get them in that cage and fight. Simple. So you see a yellow and black color. It's iconic, you know. If you're not looking at them gloves thinking, I'm going to be champion of the world, don't put them on. The yellow gloves signifies greatness to me. My name is Ian Dean. I'm the Cagewise matchmaker, and um, I've been here quite a while. The Cagewise started in 2002. First show was just after UFC 38 at the Royal Albert Hall. I remember it at the time from the forums. There was a forum called SFUK, and you know there was a lot of talk about it. Around the turn of the millennium, shows started popping up in the UK. Uh, and Cage Warriors was one of them in, in, in 2002. So it was a very different time and a very different animal to, to what we know Cage Warriors as now. The first Cage Warriors show I went to was Cage Warriors 2. And yeah, you could argue it was a bit spit and sawdusty, but yeah, I was, I, I was captivated. Tonight, we have a special bout to open up the evening. We have a women's mixed martial arts professional bout. The first Cage Warriors event that I really remember at the time was probably not until about 2005. Uh, Night of Champions, it wasn't actually called Night of Champions, I think it was called Strike Force 4 or something crazy like that. Uh, but it went on to be known as Night of Champions. I think it was 10 fights, and I believe every single one of them, or nearly every single one, was a title fight. Rose has landed a couple of great shots there. He's pushing that corner and it's all over. Waved off. Oh, no, Mark Wynn, Mark Bisping. Look at the names on that card, you know, you, you had everyone from uh, Bigfoot Silver, uh, down to Rosie Sexton opening the show. Uh, Michael Bisping was on it, and of course you had the legendary Dan Hardy versus Matt Thorpe fight, which was regarded and still is regarded as among the best Cage Warriors fights of all time. You started getting stars emerge. And I'm pretty sure that the first time the Yellow Gloves were introduced. In 2009, I got involved in a conversation with a group that were looking to purchase Cage Warriors, which was defunct at the time. It wasn't, it wasn't running. They got the deal done a year later, about 20, I think it was 2010. And when they got the deal done, they came to me to actually step in and rebuild the whole thing. At the time, it was a website name, a couple of cardboard boxes of uh, old tapes and memorabilia of old shows and no other than Ian Dean. That's what Cage Warriors was in 2010. You've also been awash with rumours on the Cage Warriors forum about future plans. Perhaps you can straighten it up. What's happening in the future for Cage Warriors? My plan was to build from the bottom up. Question. Oh, that's a so big at that time, we didn't go after any names who were big names at the time, because there was a lot of trust that would have needed to be built. So from there, we went after all the guys who were going to be the big names in two or three years. Good evening, fight fans, and welcome to the HMV Forum in London for Cage Warriors 45. The first time I saw Conor McGregor, at least face to face, was 2010. We'd just finished our first show on the Grand Boylan. Conor came into the scene and he fought on the shows in the Middle East. He fought on the shows in London. You saw the evolution of that guy, Conor McGregor, you know. And again, the inside elbow's coming in. He was out. I'm not just a striker, I'm everything. I'm an MMA fighter. You saw that his persona really starting to grow. His, you know, his image, his confidence, the, the belief system that he had. I have I've never seen, seen anything like this. Like the skills that he showed for the next several years. He took a Cage Warriors world title. And then on New Year's Eve, when he landed you know, the knockout blow. Conor McGregor! A bit of a stern test if, oh, wow. Oh, a huge shot! Wow! Bashir's completely out of it! I remember sitting cage side and you saw Twitter as well explode. Conor McGregor! I just remember sitting there like, wow. Just, just wow. Her opponent finally got to the red corner, making her way to the cage from Poland, Joanna Jędrzejczyk. 
I was super happy and excited to come to London and fight with Rosie Sexton on Cage Warriors show. And that time I knew Cage Warriors was big. I got an offer to fight the legendary UFC veteran Rosie Sexton. My coaches, my management told me that I shouldn't be fighting Rosie Sexton. She was too good for me that time. But I told them that I was going to get the fight, fight for Cage Warriors and sign a UFC contract right after. And it happened, you know. Is anyone at 125 has got, got problems here. I knocked out Rosie Sexton in the second round. And I signed, I signed with the UFC. Still undefeated, Joanna Yeldrachen! First time I wore the yellow gloves, lads, to fight was me Cage Warriors debut, obviously. I was 18 not long turned 18. Is Patrick Pibby Piblet. He also is undefeated. Fought someone called Callum Florian, lad, out of London Street Fighters. He was a fully grown man, lad. He was a big dude. It was one of my toughest fights I've ever had, to be honest. It went three rounds. Um, I was very tired at the end of it. I was that tired after the fight. I had to get carried up the stairs on Danny Roberts' back. But um, I won, lad. I've dominated, to be honest. Still undefeated from Liverpool, England. Paddy, the Paddy Pimplan. Get asked the question a lot about did we know how big Connor was going to be or how big Paddy Pimlet was going to be when we had them at Cage Warriors. And you never know how big they're going to get, but you can tell they're going to do something uh, because they're different. They walk different, they act different, and you know, the pair of them were a bigger pain in the ass than than the other fighters at a time. With the Echo Arena shows, the stars aligned. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening. Five rounds for the vacant Cage Warriors featherweight championship belt. A proud moment for myself and the team was when he actually came to walk off. The music comes on and the whole place erupted. Well, ladies and gentlemen, every so often in MMA, you get the sense that you're witnessing something special. We didn't have enough security because we weren't expecting that to happen. I had to get off my seats and run to the fighter's entrance to actually help getting him to the actual production area. When I got back to my seat and I sat down, I thought, holy shit, you know, this, this is real. We've, we've sold this venue out, but well, he sold that venue out. We put on an amazing show and it's kind of like all these years are slowly starting to come together to see big crowds. And then forget jumping over to Ellis and Adam and Paul and then jumping over to all my mates in the crowd. Declaring the winner by TKO and the new Cage Warriors featherweight champion! Cage Warriors, the platform what made me what I am. You know what I mean? Like without Cage Warriors, I wouldn't be where I am. It's, it's that simple. You, you tried and tested near enough every single world champion from Cage Warriors has then got your golden ticket to the UFC. And when Graham Boylan and Ian Dean allows you on that show, you know you're doing something right. And I think if you're not looking at them gloves thinking, I'm going to be champion of the world, don't put them on. Because that's like, that's how special they are. What a moment here in London. I think the yellow gloves are so iconic because, first of all, they're aspirational. You've got these shiny yellow, you know, instruments of destruction. The only way you can get these gloves is to step inside the Cage Warriors octagon. They're the next best thing you're going to get to any kind of realization further down the line that you've done something serious in this game, you know? It's a 1% club. We're still here after 20 years, and there aren't many people that can say that. And we're not just still here, we're still 
among the, the best at what we do on the entire planet. You know if you win a title in Cage Warriors, the UFC are gonna come calling. What legacy Cage Warriors will leave? I think a platform, a creator of champions, a place where MMA fighters can go to build their career. We would like to think that Cage Warriors will be remembered or if not still going as the cornerstone and a, an institution of the sport. And you just have to look at the former champions, the veterans that have gone through, or people that have just taken an opportunity, had that fight. They struggled to get noticed and then bang. Star is born. She can't believe it, but I think she knew it all along. That's the legacy. Oh, beautiful finish.